Well, our focus next will be on the electricity sector as the Central Bank of Nigeria supports the discourse with loans to end liquidity crisis. Since Nigeria's power sector was officially unbundled in November 2013 and the generation and distribution arms privatized, there have been complaints by other players that the discourse remit below 30% to the sector. This created severe liquidity challenges in the sector, a development that made the federal government to pump in over 1.3 trillion into the sector within a period of four years, despite the privatization carried out in 2013. In order to put an end to the liquidity problems in the sector and ensure that the discos make the right remittances to the industry, the CBN had to intervene. And so, how will the CBN's intervention support the sector growth and ensure Nigerians get adequate power supply? Damilari Ashimuyi, senior analyst at Afri Invest Securities, joins us now. Hello, Dam Larry. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Teresa. Well, it was reported earlier this week that the central bank had in the last eight months been providing loans to discos to uh, cover up their shortfalls and remittances to other players in the power value chain. What do you make out of this development? Yeah, revenue and remittance shortfall is not really a new problem in Nigeria power value chain, especially as it regards to DISCO. Uh, DISCO is the revenue collection uh, segment of the power value chain. We have the GENCOs uh, that generate electricity. So we have six of them, privately owned. Uh, we have uh, the transmission company of Nigeria, which is owned by the federal government. That's uh, like the middleman between the GENCOs and the, uh, the DISCOs who are distributed to the end users. So historically, uh, DISCOs have uh, I mean, I've found it difficult meeting 70% of uh, collection in terms of the value of power the centers. And this has pushed the federal government for many years to be the one uh, bridging these shortfalls. But as one of the critical steps that needs to be taken in line with the uh, power sector reform program with the federal government, uh, there were several recommendations amongst which includes that the federal government should uh, gradually backed out of uh, bridging the shortfall of uh, funding in the uh, power value chain, especially to these schools. So um, to drive this, uh, the federal government uh, plan to reduce its exposure this year and also roll out a number of programs. One of it is the uh, Meta As Assets Program through which, I mean, through the central bank, which is to fund uh, assets of uh, discourse in terms of metering Nigerians, which is one of the major uh, problems that is driving the revenue shortfall, because the revenue shortfall we are even talking about is just a fruit of the problems that they are having. So in the light of this, uh, in order for the discourse also to have uh, a stable uh, financial provider who can support them, of course, this time around is not going to be a free money like what the federal government gives. The what they are taking from the central bank is a loan do at a decent rate. And this is expected to make the discos more efficient in the sense that whoever, I mean, the central bank is giving the money is also expecting them to return both capital as well as the decent, do at, at, at a flexible rate. So it's a good initiative and uh, it's uh, encouraging that the central bank is uh, doing much more to help the discos both from infrastructure perspective as well as to enhance their operations. All right, I'm Larry, but uh, between 2017 and 2020, the federal government injected 1.3 trillion naira into the power sector to ensure that uh, Jenkos and gas suppliers receive enough payments to, you know, continue generating electricity. Yet, 43% of Nigerians still lack access to uh, grid electricity. What needs to be done to ensure that uh, these, uh, these investments actually yield the desired outcome? is uh, the funding by the federal government has always been going, most of it has been going down the drain of operating uh, financing. What I mean is um, federal government intervention, in, I mean, in, in the past years has always been, I mean, mostly in the past years has always been to meet their uh, funding needs in terms of procurement of gas or payment to uh, the Nigerian bulk electricity company who, who buys from Genco and sells to them. So not really to like uh, reach the poorest or poor who are in the rural communities who do not have electricity infrastructure. And that's why 
bulk of the money we have been talking about goes to just uh, meeting all these recurrent needs. So today, Nigeria has 43% of its population lacking access to energy. That's the highest deficit in the world. So it that means these people does not even have uh, power access at all. So the funding from the federal government has been going down the drain of meeting operational needs. And that's similar to what we are experiencing the uh, PMS space. I mean, federal government subsidizing petrol, which mostly benefits uh, the, uh, the elite, so to say, those who have the capacity to run generator, you know, to drive several fleet cars, and not the extreme poor in the rural villages. So that is why, uh, despite those injections, we still have, a, we have the highest uh, def energy deficit in the world because most of that funding goes into a recurrent spending. Now, according to the World Bank in its recent report on Nigeria's development update titled Resilience Through Reforms, this calls aggregate technical, commercial, and collection losses averaged 50% in 2020. That's higher than the 15% uh, international good practice and the 26% allowed by NERC in the tariff policy. What can be done to reverse this trend? Like I mentioned earlier, um, the revenue issue we started with is a fruit. Now, this is one of the drivers. Uh, over the years, it has been established that um, the power value chain in Nigeria has a lot of inefficiency in between it. How do I mean? From the point, Nigeria has a 12.5 uh, gigawatt um, electricity capacity. But out of this, for 51%, which is uh, in excess of uh, six gigawatts, is high due. I mean, it's due to obsolete uh, equipment. It's only uh, six, uh, six point one out of this that is available for generation. However, gen calls are not maximizing this potential because the infrastructure of TCN cannot carry this amount of power. And so what gen code does over the years is to uh, generate about around 4,000 plus and send to discos. And in the process of sending this, there is loss of an average of 7%, which is higher than, uh, ex I mean, the, the, the benchmark for the industry of 3%. So from, uh, from TCN, which is transfer company, to disco also, due to weak infrastructure, there is an estimated loss of about, of about 20, another 25%. So, which means that if 100 units of uh, 100 kilowatts of power is sent from CCN to Disco, uh, about 25% is lost due to weak infrastructure. What Disco takes delivery is only 75%. And from this 75%, when Disco is also sent out, it is also estimated that an average of 33% uh, is lost in terms of uh, inability to collect from the end users. And that's why I mentioned earlier that the problem, I mean, the revenue problem is the fruit of several factors. Factors like weak infrastructure, factors like um, inadequate metering of, of, uh, of discos, client base, as well as more years of, years of uh, running a tariff that is far below a cost reflective one. So all these are what is feeding into uh, the operations of players in the Nigeria energy value chain, and that is making average technical uh, commercial and collection loss to be as high as 50, like what we have in 2020. So to, 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 to resolve this, uh, the infrastructure needs to be worked on, especially from the discos hand. But what we currently have on ground now that we're having a tariff that is only being managed by the government will not encourage new investors to come in and put in their money because there's no investor that wants to invest and I'll still be running around to go and meet a CBN or a commercial bank to provide them with uh, funds to bridge the, 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 the operational gap. And this is a major issue that the federal government is gradually uh, working on by first ensuring that Nigerians are adequately um, meted and also provide, uh, I mean, encourage CBN to fund these people at a decent interest rate so that they can, they can optimize their operation and, and improve power supply in the country.
All right, the, the, the federal government under its presidential power initiative program in 2019 signed an agreement with Siemens, a, a German-owned uh, power giant, to help achieve an operational grid capacity of about uh, 25 uh, gigawatts by 2025. And this is expected to be achieved in tranches. Uh, do you think uh, this project can, you know, solve Nigeria's power problem? Well, the project is, uh, is a commendable one. Um, the project is expected to have about seven, seven gigawatts of Nigerian power this year. Uh, from what we last heard, the federal government has made the commitment of about 8.6 billion to the project. Uh, but in terms of meeting Nigerian energy need in, in, in whole, I think uh, the project is far from that. For instance, Nigeria's population is in excess of 200 million. And for Nigeria to conveniently power this large population to have a stable 24-hour power supply, we also need about 200 gigawatts of power or about 200 million megawatts of power uh, capacity to produce this. But currently we have uh, four. That's what uh, this goes uh, transmit on average. And we're expecting that the cement project will scale it up to seven this year. Uh, to 11 by 2023 and to 25. So by that time, even if we assume Nigerian population have not increased an inch, the cement um, investment or the cement, uh, the project that is being headed by cement will only solve about one head of the power need in Nigeria. But again, we must also uh, not um, undermine this project in the sense that if this succeed, it will help, you know, in encouraging more of this to come, at least starting from somewhere, is a good thing. If we move from uh, four gigawatt to seven, it then means that energy, energy per capita will improve in Nigeria from the current 148 to about 249. And so by 2025, if we move to um, 25 gigawatt, the energy capital will move to close to 1,000, I mean, about 960 or something. So we'll move close to our African peers, South Africa that have energy per capita of 1005 so it's not enough to solve the problem but it's a it's a it's a good step and we hope the project uh succeed so that it can um, reduce the power constraints in nigeria we hope so too damilari thank you very much we do appreciate your time with us this morning you're welcome fx commodities market update is next do stay with us this is business Morning.